good morning to your student i hope you are safe at home and let uh, once again i am dr smita pakhare welcome you all on the third lecture of protein metabolism where where we are going to discuss fate of ammonia and urea cycle so let me share my screen so this is a first le third lecture of fate of ammonia and urea cycle so before going to the individual phases let's uh, revise let or let's have a overview of ammonia or view of ammonia metabolism so here uh, we have as we learned in last lecture that uh, ammonia is released as a result of transamination and deamination reactions of the amino acid same way ammonia is released from the catabolism of nucleotide even catabolism of biogenic am amine and action of intestinal bacteria on urea like urea plus urea into ammonia again in the intestine so as as we have seen that there are so many resources to form the ammonia but blood level of free ammonia is very low and it is around mimtin 10 to 20 microgram per dl now why this happen because whatever ammonia release in the in the tissue or the organ it is not transported in the free form but it is converted into soluble and less toxic form for example liver brain and muscle this this convert ammonia which is formed in uh, in that place into glutamine while muscle all converts ammonia into alanine and this glutamine and alanine they are transported to the liver where it is utilized for synthesis of urea and in and this uh, even in kidney and in kidney it is excreted as a urea or a free ammonium ion as a result of retention of sodium ion so this is how ammonia is uh, synthesized transported and excreted but it doesn't though the major part of ammonia is excreted through the kidney but it is not, ammonia is still important in our body a significant of ammonia lies that it it is used in the synthesis of non essential amino acid even it is the glutamine which is the transport form of uh, ammonia it has uh, it it plays significant role in the synthesis of urine pyrimidine and transamination reaction the major part of free ammonia is converted into urea and even it leads to the synthesis of glutamine so this is an overview of ammonia metabolism now let's study this ammonia metabolism in step wise manner so first a uh, synthesis of ammonia we have discuss in detail in last lecture so we will start from the transport of ammonia so there are two major form of transport of ammonia in our body so this is the glutamine synthesis of glutamine and synthesis of alanine so how this glutamine uh, let's discuss this formation of glutamine so in brain muscle and liver this glutamate ammonia combines with glutamate to form glutamine and you can see this is a unidirectional reaction and it requires atp the atp molecule is broken down into adp and pi and it also require magnesium ion now glutamine synthesis is present it not present in everywhere but it is present in liver muscle and brain and here it will uh, fix ammonia to the glutamate to form glutamine now glutamine acts as a temporary storage form of the ammonia and it transport ammonia from this um, from this cells uh, from this organs to the kidney and liver if now apart from this glutamine has its own significance that it takes part in the transamination reaction to form different product even if it it is helpful in the synthesis of urine and pyrimidine it takes part in the detoxification reaction by conjugation and it helps in the synthesis of glutamate so these are the importance of glutamine but major fate of glutamine is it it is it is transported to the kidney and liver and there is a enzyme glutaminase now glutaminase uh, enzyme is present in kidney liver and some part of intestinal cell now even glutam uh, there are two isoenzymes which can be present like glutam uh, renal and hepatic isoenzyme so in kidney this glutaminase cleaves this glutamine and leads to the release of the ammonium ion and reformation of glutamate and this ammonium ion are excreted through the 
kidney in a in exchange of retention of sodium ion so mainly this in kidney this glutam uh, glutamine it helps in the acid base balance but in liver again this ammonia combines with under uh, combines with glutamate and uh, sorry in liver this ammonia is utilized for the synthesis of urea major part is utilized for the synthesis of urea so you can see this is the formation of glutamine it is a major pathway for disposal of ammonia in the brain and here you can see as a glutamine uh, formation of glutamine is the unidirectional reaction and it needs glutamate so synthesis of glutamine consumes glutamate and you know how glutamate is synthesized again glutamate is synthesized from the alpha ketoglutarate and alpha ketoglutarate is an important part of tca cycle so whenever there is more formation of glutamine it will utilize glutamate and that will deplete the alpha ketoglutarate and thereby it will also decrease the tca cycle so this this we will discuss in the ammonia toxicity again so this is the transport of ammonia in the form of glutamine now let's discuss the another transport mechanism of ammonia and that is through the alanin so you can see the muscles mostly muscle utilizes branch chain amino acids for for its energy purpose here and you can see this amino acid on the amination it transfers this amino group to the glutamate by the reaction transamination now this glutamate uh, again with help of enzyme alanine amino transferase or alt what we know so with this enzyme this glutamate is converted into alanine and there is a regeneration of alpha ketoglutarate now this alanine is diffusible and it will comes in the blood and this in uh, and from the muscle it is transported to the liver in liver okay and there is a reversal of same reaction of alanine tra transaminase occur and there is a regeneration of glutamate here and this glutamate again it undergo oxidative deamination to remove uh, ammonia and this ammonium ion are utilized for the synthesis of urea then let which later on excreted in the kidney so this is how the ammonia is transported in the form of glucose through the glucose alanine cycle that this transport of alanine is also associated with the glucose transport also so this was a transport methods of ammonia in the form of glutamine and alanine now let's see what are the functions of ammonia as we have already discussed it is help it helps in the synthesis of urea then purine and pyrimidine like nitrogen atoms of purine and pyrimidine are derived from the urea it also takes part in the formation of non essential amino acid then even synthesis of aspartame and other amino sugars are derived from ammonia and this ammonium ion are utilized for acid base regulation in the kidney so how this ammonia is disposed in different organism like you can see in aquatic animals are amniotelic means and in this these animals excrete ammonia in its original form or birds or reptile they are uricotelic they convert ammonia into uric acid and it is excreted out while human being and other mammals they excrete you ammonia as a urea that's why they are known as a ureotelic animal now as we have seen how ammonia is trapped in the form of glutamine and uh, alanine but still there is ammonia uh, ammonia free ammonia which can cause ammonia intoxication so let's see the mechanism behind ammonia intoxication so in most of the reaction we have seen the transport mechanism is formation of uh, glutamine but this glutamine means glutamate uh, the glutamine is formed with help of uh with help of glutamate and this is how this when once this glutamate is overused it has to resynthesize and this resynthesis of gluta glutamate will involve utilization of alpha ketoglutarate with help of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase but but as we know that alpha ketoglutarate is an integral part of tca cycle it can it it will lead to the uh, depletion of alpha ketoglutarate will lead, lead to the slowing of uh, 
TCA cycle. And that's why you can see the ATP generation in that target tissue will be less. So what are the mechanisms behind ammonia intoxication? So it is first is the utilization of alpha ketoglutarate, which slows TCA cycle and it leads to the depletion of energy in the form of ATP. Second thing you know that glutamate is an important precursor to synthesize GABA. When glutamate is utilized uh, into form glutamine, that will lead to the deficiency GABA, uh, deficiency of neurotra inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA in the brain. Then you can, uh, there is one thing that there is a trick of uh, this glutamine is uh, transported out from the cell and it is, uh, this glutamine uses same transport mechanism by which glutamine is uh, transported out and similarly uh, tryptophan is taken inside of the inside of the brain so this is an antiport mechanism so it will lead to because of increased excretion of uh, glutamine, glutamine from the brain it will on that exchange, there will be increased entrance of tryptophan in the brain. And tryptophan is the uh, precursor for uh, stimulatory neurotransmitter, that is melatonin and serotonin. So this is, again, it will lead to increased excitatory uh, stimulus. Then increased synthesis, even there is increased synthesis of toxic alpha ketoglutaramate, which, uh, which is toxic to the brains. And all this mechanism leads to the ammonia toxic. Uh, toxicity and uh, we can see what are the symptoms of ammonia like nausea, vomiting, then blurring of vision, slurring of speech and uh, flapping tremor and even if it is not treated, it can lead to hepatic coma. So these are the features of ammonia intoxication. So let's come to the important vital part of protein metabolism that is urea cycle. Urea cycle, it is also known as krebs henslet cycle. This is because in first time in 1932, scientists Krebs and Kurz Henslet elucidated this reactions of urea cycle. Hence, it is this urea cycle is also known as krebs henslet cycle. Now, dear student, please uh, Note down this point that Krebs Henslet cycle is a urea cycle, while only Krebs cycle is TCA cycle. Do not confuse the question if you get uh, questions in the examination because this totally there are there are two different cycles and they have different rules. Okay, so Krebs cycle is a TCA cycle, while Krebs Henslet cycle is a urea cycle. So, again, come back to urea cycle. So, it's a major route of detoxification of ammonia. It occurs in liver only. Now, first two steps of this urea cycle occurs in mitochondria and remaining three steps, they, are occur, they occur in cytosol. Now, let's study urea cycles in stepwise manner. So, first two steps, amongst the first step in the mitochondria, you get the ammonia, we have already discussed, we get ammonia, source of ammonia is transamination and deamination reaction. Then uh, even uh, from the catabolism of biogenic amine, nucleotide. Uh, so this ammonia is fixed with the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide we get as a result of cellular respiration. So carbon dioxide and ammonia, they, uh, they they combine together with help of enzyme carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1 and it leads to the synthesis of carbamoyl phosphate. Okay, once again I repeat, the ammonia is fixed to the carbon, carbon dioxide to form carbamoyl phosphate. The enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. Now, why I am reinforcing it as a carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1? Because we have enzyme of similar name, that is carbamoyl phosphate synthase 2, which is a cytosolic enzyme and which is responsible for synthesis of purine. So, please don't get confused. This is the CPS1, saying carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. Now, this is a unidirectional reaction and it needs 2 ATP. 2 ATP we are catabolized to 2 ADP and PI. One more thing, this is the, it requires an activator, which is known as N-acetyl glutamate. So this N-acetyl glutamate acts as an activator of carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. And hence, this is a regulatory step of 
urea cycle please remember even you get a short note on first step of urea cycle only so you have to remember all the points which i have mentioned regarding first step of urea cycle okay so now let's let's, uh, let's move so once carbamoyl phosphate synthesis is synthesized in mitochondria it combines with the ornithine and there is a formation of citrulline Actually, it, this uh, carbamoyl phosphate transfer its uh, carbamoyl group to the ornithine to form citrulline. Hence, enzyme ca which catalyzes this reaction is known as ornithine transcarbamoylase. Now, this reaction is again in the mitochondria, and citrulline, which is formed in the mitochondria, it is transported out in the cytoplasm. And there is one more enzyme uh, is needed for this. This is known as citrulline translocase, but we don't count it in the as an enzyme of urea cycle. So this citrulline is transported out in the cytoplasm. In cytoplasm, the citrulline combines with aspartate. Now aspartate is formed uh, from the oxalo acetate on transamination reaction so this aspartate is again amino acid citrulline combines with aspartate to form arginosuccinate the reaction is catalyzed by enzyme arginosuccinate synthase and this again require atp but here one atp is uh, broken down into amp and ppi so he, he, even for conversion of AMP to ADP, there is another ATP molecule is used. That's why most of the time this consumption of ATP uh, is in this reaction is counted as a 2 ATP. So there is a difference of opinion, but you should know that it, it can be counted as a 2 ATP. So let's move to the reaction number 4. So once arginosuccinate is synthesized, now it is cleaved with help of enzyme arginosuccinase and it leads to the formation of arginine and fumarate. Now this fumarate will enter in the TCA cycle. And arginine is present here. It, can, it would be cleaved in the last step of urea cycle by enzyme arginase and there is a formation of urea. Now you can see the speciality of this arginase is it is present only in liver. Remember, this is this present this is present only in liver. That's why urea cycle occurs only in liver and not other tissue. Okay, will you remember that? Okay. So this is the enzyme arginase which which form urea, and there is a reformation of ornithine. Now ornithine again can combined with carbamoyl phosphate and this urea cycle can go on go on repeatedly in the um, in the liver tissue so this is about urea cycle so you can see here how how many steps are there out of five steps two steps are into the mitochondria while three steps are in the cytoplasm now let's see how this urea cycle is linked with the tca cycle so you can see here now aspartate fumarate which is formed in the urea cycle in the fourth step of urea which urea cycle it enters in the tca cycle it is converted into malate and oxaloacetate in the tca cycle and this oxaloacetate can undergo transamination to form aspartate and this aspartate can enter in the urea cycle so this is a link link between the uh, urea cycle and Krebs cycle you have to remember okay so this is all about the steps different steps of urea cycle now we will see we will summarize the urea cycle like uh, the urea is the end product of urea cycle. Most of the urea is excited in the kidney, while few part is in uh, excited in the intestine. In intestine, there is the uh, enzyme urease. Now, this urease acts on the urea to and cleave it into carbon dioxide and ammonia, and this ammonia can be diffused back in the blood or it is excreted in the feces. Now remember, though urease acts on the urea, it is not an enzyme of urea cycle. This is present in the intestine. Most of the students con confuse 
as uh, and they take urease as a enzyme of urea cycle the claim remember it is not a enzyme of urea cycle now can we sum up summarize the urea cycle so we know that there are consumption of three atp but you know that one atp in uh, synthesis of arginosuccinase it is linked to the amp so we can count it as a two at two atp like why because this amp has to be converted into adp and for that again one atp will be cleaved so together it is it consumes three atp or you can you can say four atp so please there is a controversy keep in mind now total five enzymes are involved you know the name then we are going to revise it again the amino acids which are utilized in this uh, urea cycle the two are the protein amino acid which are this one is aspartic acid and arginine while three are non protein nitrogenous amino acid like ornithine citrulline and arginosuccinic acid and one activator is important that is n acetyl glutamine activator is important so we can summarize like one ammonium ion plus carbon dioxide plus one molecule of aspartate and three atp will give you urea one molecule of urea fumarate two adp two pi one amp and one ppi so this is how we ha we have completed with the urea cycle but important part is remaining that is the regulation of urea cycle so urea cycle is regulated in two way one is the allosteric regulation of carbamoyl phosphate synthesis one now we know that n acetyl glutamate that is nag is the allosteric regulator activator of cps1 and how it is uh, activated so you can see the synthesis of n acetyl glutamate need acetyl coa and glutamate this acetyl coa and glutamate in presence of uh, energy synthesis it is uh, it leads to the synthesis of n acetyl glutamate which can be again hydrolyzed back with help of enzyme nag hydrolase to form glutamate and acetate so presence of n acetyl glutamate allosterically activate this cps1 now second you can see that this synthesis of nag also depends on the availability of the substrate and availability of product also like arginine glutamine and even high protein diet if they are available in high amount it will accelerate its own formation and that's why it is known it, it is also example of feed forward regulation so product itself activating its own synthesis so this is a regulation of the the feed forward regulation so let's uh, so this complete we are completing with the regulation of urea cycle now let's see relation between tca cycle and urea cycle why you should not confuse with krebs cycle and krebs henslet cycle so you can see here urea cycle in urea cycle fumarate is formed while in tca cycle fumarate is consumed and it is used for the formation of malate and oxaloacetate here aspartate is utilized while here as oxaloacetate is converted aspartate is synthesized in tca cycle in urea cycle co2 is utilized while in tca cycle co2 is formed then urea cycle is it consumes atp while tca cycle is a main source of atp in our body per cycle there is a generation of 10 atp now let's come to the disorders of urea cycle as every enzyme has uh, an It, it needs to be synthesized properly, and any defect in the synthesis of enzyme will lead to the accumulation of product and deficiency. Or sorry, in defect in the synthesis of enzyme will lead to the accumulation of substrate and defect in the product. So, uh, if, uh, urea cycle also has a, a genetic disorders, which are because of the defect in the enzymes of urea cycle so let's discuss what my one so you can see first enzyme regulatory enzyme of urea cycle is carbamoyl phosphate synthase one when it is deficient it leads to the hyperammonemia type 2 as we know that this is the first step of trapping ammonia to the carbon dioxide when this does not happen it leads to increased level of ammonemia ammonia in the blood and it leads to the severe hyperammonemia and uh, and that that's why it, uh, it leads to the mental retardation and this this can be a fatal also now coming to second 
defect in the disorder is the de deficiency of ornithine transcarbamylase. Now, this enzyme, when it's deficient, it, uh, the synthesis of citrulline is hampered and there is increased, increased uh, amount of carbamoyl phosphate remain in the blood. So, carbamoyl phosphate, uh, now this can be utilized for the synthesis of pyrimidine and this synthesis of pyrimidine can... Uh, uh, it leads to the orotic acid urea. So this is a hyperammonemia type 2. Now let's come to the uh, third, uh, defi uh, third deficiency. Now you know ornithine is present in cytoplasm, but it has to be transported into mitochondria for the second reaction of urea cycle. Now when this transported protein is deficient, it leads to the hyper ornithinemia and that uh, hyperornithemia leads to increased level of ornithine in the blood, increased level of hyperammonemia and it also leads to homocitrullinemia. So this is known as a 3H disorder because of uh, defect in the shifting protein. Now let's see the uh, third Fourth defect, that is a defect because of adenosuccinate synthase. Deficiency of adenosuccinate synthase, it leads to the citrullinemia. The citrulline levels are increased uh, and the, uh, it leads to increased uh, accumulation of level in the uh, citrulline in the blood as well as more excretion of citrulline in the urine. Now, fifth disorder is the adenosuccinic acid urea. This is due to the deficiency of enzyme adenosuccinase or adenosuccinate lyase and this leads to increased concentration of adenosuccinate in the blood, urine and even in CSF. So that will uh, increase excretion of adenosuccinate in the urine. And uh, this adenosuccinic acid urea is also characterized by brittle hair, hair, hair tuft. Now coming to the hyperarginemia, this is the disorder because of deficiency of enzyme arginase. Now when your arginase is deficient, this in level of arginine increases in the blood and that leads to the hyperarginemia. Now let's see the, uh, let's see the tabulated form of urea cycle disorder. We have already seen the scene that hyperammonemia type type 1 is because of deficiency of carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1. It leads to increased level of ammonia and this leads to mental retardation. Hyperammonemia type 2, it is a deficiency of ornithine transcarbomylase deficiency and it leads to increased level of ammonia and glutamine in the blood and it leads to uro uh, urine orotic acid urea. Now hyperornithemia is because of defective ornithine transport of protein and it leads to uh, it leads to hyperornithemia hyperammonemia and homocitrullinemia, triple H syndrome. Citrullinemia is because of the deficiency of arginosuccinase synthase. It leads to increased level of ammonia in the blood and citrulline in the blood and urine. Arginosuccinic acid urea is because of deficiency of arginosuccinate lyase, which increases the level of arginosuccinic acid in blood and urine. Now, hyperarginemia is because of deficiency of arginase 1, which leads to increased level of arginine in CSF and urine. So here we have seen what are the urea cycle disorders and its symptoms. But we can um, sum up all symptoms, uh, all urea cycle disorder in one form. Like it, urea cycle disorders is because of deficiency of any enzyme of urea cycle. We'll get the symptoms of ammonia intoxication, then encephalopathy, that is the brain, toxicity and respiratory alkalosis. So uh, most of the symptoms include like protein-induced vomiting, intermittent ataxia, irritability, lethargy, and it may lead to the mental retardation. How to investigate such patient? Their blood ammonia level will be raised and there will be raised plasma amino acid levels also. And there is increased urinary organic acid excretion. Even blood pH will be low and PCO2 concentration will be high. Now, how to manage such patients? So when ammonium ions, uh, you have to remember that when ammonium ions are not converted into citrulline or arginosuccinic acid, they are converted, they are diverted to another path and there is increased synthesis of glycine and glutamine. So in the management of patient, we have to exploit the alternate pathway of nitrogen excretion. So we have to induce excretion of glycine and glutamine. So, uh, so here is the sodium benzoate can be helpful. This so, administration of sodium benzoate, benzoate will, uh, it 
it will combine with the glycine and it will convert it into hepurate and hepurate is a less toxic product which is easily exited through the urine. Same is with the phenylbutazone, phenylbutrate. It combines with the glutamine and it forms phenylacetylglutamine. And this phenylacetylglutamine can be easily exited through the urine. So that's why we, uh, we are, uh, we are um, promoting excretion of nitrogen by the alternate path as a management of urea cycle disorder. Now let's have a look at the blood urea. Normal level of blood urea is 10 to 40 milligram per day. And in urine, it is excited up to 15 to 30 grams per day. Now, estimation of blood urea is very commonly followed and it is used as a test for assess, test to assess renal function. Now, uh, ure, increased level of blood urea is known as a urine, uremia. But there are two terminologies you need to remember. One is urine, uremia. Here, the blood urea is rise due to the renal failure, while azotemia is another term. Here also blood urea level is increased, but here, now, uh, uh, along with blood urea, other endometabolites are also increased, and this is irrespective of renal disorder. So you can think that whatever the disorders of a uh, urea cycle, we can count it as azotemia, not a uremia. Okay, so now let's see what are the causes of uremia. Again, I repeat, uremia is because of renal failure. So, uh, pre-renal causes of uremia is, it can be increased protein breakdown, increased protein catabolism as a result of surgery, prolonged fear, fever and thyrotoxicosis. In renal causes, the renal pathologists like acute glomerulonephritis, chronic glomerulonephritis and nephrosclerosis, it decreases the urea filtration and excretion through the Kidney. That's why it leads to increased uh, levels of blood urea. Now, post renal is also obstruction in urinary tract in the form of uh, trauma, stricture, uh, or any stone or any malignancy that will also hamper urinary excretion of urea and that will lead to increased level of blood urea. So, here we will stop and in next class we will continue with the individual amino acid metabolism. And if you uh, like this, lecture please uh, you can hit the like button and you can share and subscribe to the channel and uh, i hope that i i can better serve you again with the good lectures in coming period so thank you mm -hmm.